Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to start drawing the basic shapes for Vesper structures. Our objective is to draw these basic shapes for compounds that follow the octet rule, um, including understanding um, the different types of lines that we draw to communicate these shapes. As we saw off of the uh, FET simulations, um, the computer software can easily draw these ball and stick models that um, show these shapes very nicely. But when we go to draw this by hand on a sheet of paper, it's a lot harder to do. And we have some formalisms to follow that um, are shown in the lower right hand corner where you see a C for this, the carbon atom in the middle and then the H's for the four hydrogen atoms. And then we've got three different types of lines. Um, and each type of line um, has a different meaning behind it. So first of all, if we have just a plain old line, um, it's assumed to be in the same plane as the sheet of paper that you're drawing it on. So in this um, example, we have that uh, central carbon atom. Let's see, I, don't, I think I need to change color of pen here. Um, we have that central carbon atom and we're going to take three points to define the plane. So we're going to take the top hydrogen and the right hand hydrogen and say that these two bonds um, put these three atoms in the plane of the paper. And so when we draw it in the structure down below, they, the central carbon is connected to a hydrogen that's straight up above it and to one that's down and to the right. And um, those regular lines mean that it's in the plane of the paper. Then if we draw a solid wedge, the atom that is the outside atom connected by the solid wedge is coming closer to you out in front of the plane of your paper. And so if we look at our top um, uh, FET type structure, ball and stick model, we're talking about this part right here. Um, that carbon atom is shown in the structure down below as um, right here. It's shown down here with that wedge. Um, so the, the carbon is in the plane of the paper and then the hydrogen is coming out towards you. And then for the last one, a dotted line or a dotted wedge is behind the paper. So this dotted wedge is showing that last remaining uh, hydrogen atom. It's tucked behind the plane of the paper. The carbon atom in the middle is closer than the um, the hydrogen atom, or it's closer to you than the hydrogen atom is. And so that dotted wedge that we're showing down here is representing this um, uh, hydrogen atom. When we look at our basic electron geometries. Uh, let's see, those electron geometries are shown in this first column of this table. So I'm going to label this column electron geometries. This is showing the geometry assumed by the electron domains as they repel and spread themselves out around the central atom. If we have two domains, they'll spread themselves out to make a line, getting as far apart from one another as possible. We call that shape linear. If we have three, they will be uh, a shape called uh, trigonal pyramid. Planar. And if we have four electron uh, domains, the electron geometry will be a shape called tetrahedral. Now for the three and four domain cases, it's also possible that one of those domains or more could be a lone pair. And we don't really see lone pairs. What we see when we try to look at the shapes of molecules is the positions of the atoms, the, the parts that have the, the biggest mass. And so um, if on our trigonal planar geometry, one of those lone pairs or one of the domains is a lone pair. And so lone pairs are listed up here on the top. Um, so if we're looking at three 
uh, domains and one lone pair, what we can actually see are the positions of the central atom and the two atoms that are at the end of the bonding domains, but where that lone pair is located, we can't see an atom. So what we end up calling that shape is bent because it almost looks like those atoms should be in a line, but they're not quite. That line got bent. For the case of four electron domains and one lone pair domain, we get a shape known as trigonal pyramidal. And it's typically drawn like this so that you can see um, the three outside atoms form a triangle. And then the center atom is higher than those three, forming the point of a pyramid. So it's a trigonal pyramidal structure because the base of the pyramid is a triangle and then the central atom forms the tip of the pyramid. If instead of having one lone pair, we have two lone pair domains, then uh, we end up with a shape that's also called bent. Um, we have three uh, atoms that are not quite in a line, so that's where that term bent comes from. Now, when we're looking at these domains and um, the electron geometry versus the molecular geometry, by the way, the, uh, the, the names that are listed in each of the squares are referred to as the molecular geometry. So for instance, trigonal pyramidal, that's our molecular geometry. Um, when we're trying to look a little bit more closely at these shapes, uh, there are bond angles associated with each of them. In the case of the linear geometry, since it's a line, that bond angle is 180 degrees, and that bond angle refers to the angle formed around that central atom. In the case of trigonal planar, those atoms are spread out towards the corners of an equilateral triangle which makes a bond angle of 120 degrees. And in the case of the tetrahedral geometry, all of those bond angles are 109 and a half degrees. If we're going to represent these on paper, with our uh, conventions for how we draw the different types of lines. Um, for the linear case, you could draw your central atom, which I'll just generically label A, and then the two outside atoms are X's, and they're just uh, all three in a line. In the case of the trigonal planar structure, we have our central atom, and then the bonds point towards the corners of an equilateral triangle, and they're all in the same plane. So we use just regular uh, lines for those. But in the case of a tetrahedron, we will have our central atom. We're going to use all three styles of lines. Normally, the way this gets drawn is we have one line going straight up, we have one line going down into the right, and then we're going to draw two lines going down into the left. One of them is a solid wedge, and this outside atom is coming out at you, and the other is going down as a dotted line, and that indicates that that last X that I just drew is tucked away behind the plane of the paper. In the case of um, no lone pairs on your, your uh, central atom, which is right here. The electron geometries and the molecular geometries are the same. In the case of having lone pairs, the electron geometry is given by the first column, and then the actual molecular geometry is given by the name in the uh, subsequent column. So to try to put a little bit of that more explicitly into words, how do these lone pairs on the central atom affect the shape? Well, we can't really see the lone pairs, but they are there, and they're repelling the bonding in lone pairs. Um, uh, so they are holding their, their spot in these Vesper structures. Um, and so the, the phrase electron geometry well, for it refers to either linear, trigonal, planar, or tetrahedral. 
um, depending on whether you have two, three, or four domains. And then if you if even one of those domains is a lone pair, then the molecular geometry will be different. Um, the molecular geometry uh, will be bent or trigonal pyramidal. The process of drawing Vesper structures. Uh, first of all, you've got to have a Lewis dot structure to work from because that's where we're going to get the number of domains on the central atom. Um, so after you draw the Lewis dot structure, you're going to count the number of electron domains to find the electron geometry. And then you're going to count the number of uh, lone or non-bonding pairs to find the molecular geometry. And sometimes instead of saying molecular geometry, people will say shape. And the molecular geometry or shape will be different from the electron geometry if lone pairs are present. 